In this chapter, we'll talk about fast Fourier transform. That is a very big chapter. Uh, in fact, in this particular chapter, we would like to talk specifically about Tweedle factor fast Fourier transform algorithm. Okay, in this lecture number 22, we will talk about Tweedle factor fast Fourier transform algorithms. In order to understand the detail of this chapter, let us consider again where the number of sample data point capital N can be expressed as the product of two integer R1 time R2. Assuming R1 equal to 4 and assuming R2 equal to 4. So capital N is equal to 16. But again, the idea presented in this chapter can be generalized to a different value for R1 and a different value for R2. And the same idea can also be extend further so that capital N can be expressed as R1 time R2 time R3 blah 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 time R sub M. Okay? But to simplify the discussion, we just focus on the development of the idea of Tweedle factor for capital N equal to R1 time R2. And specifically, as I said, R1 equal to 4 and R2 equal to 4. All right. In this chapter, we want to make sure to explain about the Tweedle factor so that the fast Fourier transform, which is already very, very fast compared to the so-called discrete Fourier transform. However, using the Tweedle factor in this chapter, we can improve even further. Here is the way it works. According to the earlier uh, formula, when we talk about the so-called informal development, informal development of fast Fourier transform, at that time we say the unknown vector C delta expressed based on the index small n is equal to the summation on the index small k of f of k multiplied with w raised to the power n k at that time. Now, because we assume that the small index m can be expressed in terms of the two indexes n1 and n0, so the summation on k now become a double summation on k0 and k1, where the first summation, the index k0, going from 0 to r2 minus 1, and the second index k1 going from 0 to r1 minus 1. This also the function f instead of expressed on k, now it is expressed f in terms of the pair k1 and k0. And similarly, uh, the index n time k, now you can express by substitute the value for the small n and the value for the small k in term of n0, n1, k0, k1, and so on. So the term w raised to the power n k is becoming this term right here, as I show you on the second equation. The, the first two equations I wrote down in here basically come from the previous chapter. Nothing is new up to now. Okay? Up to the first two equations on this slide just to come from the previous lecture. So now what we can say is this. The second equation for C tilde can be rewritten as following. What you can do is we say, all right, uh, let's see now. 
N0, K1. Yeah, you see, if you look at here, you have N0 time K1, that is a power of W, that term is here, and then you replace R2 equal to 4. Okay? Because you remember we assume in this chapter capital N is equal to R1 time R2 and we assume R2 is equal to 4. You know? And we also assume R1 is equal to 4 in this chapter. So when you let R2 equal to 4, this is what you have. Then if we look at the next term, you're supposed to have W raised to the power N0 times K0, as indicated in the black color there. That term is exactly right here, as I show you in equation 97. And then, finally, you will have another term which is W raised to the power N1 R1 time K0, as I show you in the green color. But remember, R1 is also equal to 4. So that term become W raised to the power 4 time N1 time K0. So, all I did is, from the second equation that you see on the computer screen, we make use of the fact that in this chapter we assume R1 and R2 equal to 4. Then immediately, this second equation becomes equation 97. So, this is what we have. Now, the next thing that we argue is this. The next thing we argue, we say this term that you see right here in equation 97, that term you may include it in the first inner product or you can include that with the second term product. So in this particular chapter, let's say we decided to including this term, which is W raised to the power N0, K0. Let's say we include that inside the first inner product. OK? You see, here, that term W raised to the power N0, K0, we include that inside the inner summation. So what does that mean? What it means is, in the previous chapter, if you remember, we define the summation of the first inner product is going from here to here. That is the definition for the vector F1. Now, because we also including the term W raised to the power N0, K0, so our definition extended to including even these term in here to make sure that this term, let's say, including in the first inner product. Then, after that, assuming we already compute vector F1, then the next thing we say, the summation on the second product, second summation, which is K0, time this term W, together will give you the second intermediate vector F2. And that F2 should give you the answer for the unknown C tilde. So now our focus will be, let us try to including this term W raised to the power N0, K0, include that in the computation of the vector F1. And let's see what happened. So, Here it is, as you can see, the computation of the first vector F1 is equal to this term that we said earlier, but now we also including the term 
W raised to the power n0 k0. And then we say after we compute the intermediate vector f1 in equation 98, we get that term right here, and then we multiply with W raised to the power 4n1k0, which is this term right there in equation 98. Together, we got equation 99 to figure out the computational of the second vector f2. And again, we said that f2 should be the same thing as the unknown vector c tilde, except the order of c tilde is n1, comma n0, whereas the order of f2 is n0, comma n1, and which means after computation of the vector f2, we have to do reverse bit bit reversing ordering or unscrambling process to get to the unknown c tilde. Now, in the next